for joining us and tuning in for the Latrobe Art Center's second episode of our vlog, Art Neighbors. I'm Michael Toussaint, the executive director here at the Latrobe Art Center, and joining me today is Barbara Nagels, who is the chair of the Greater Latrobe School District Art Conservation Trust. So welcome, Barbara. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to sit down and talk Thank to me you. today. Um, so to, to begin, why don't you just start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself and your personal background. I was born in Latrobe. I've been in, lived in the Latrobe School District all my life. And I attended the schools of Latrobe, graduated and graduated from Seton Hill worked with my husband as legal assistant uh, and became what's known as a community volunteer, uh, <laughs> serving on a number of boards, both here, like the uh, Adams Library, the Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve, the uh, Westmoreland Trust, Seton Hill College, Teal College, wow. that kind of thing. But now I concentrate mostly on the Art Conservation Trust and the Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve. Wow. Wow. You certainly have a busy schedule and a busy life, I'll say. I do, and it's <laughs> wonderful, and I meet the most wonderful people. I'm sure. I'm sure you do. So tell us now a little bit um, just about the Art Conservation Trust. You know, what, what is the trust? Um, what are its mission and goals? Um, yeah. The trust was formed in 1990 when James Beatty, who was 90 years old at the time, uh, and one of the two founders of the collection, came to my husband, Ned, who was the solicitor for the school district, and said, you have to do something to preserve this trial, to preserve the collection, which was started in 1936. And uh, Ned went to the school board and said, you have to do something. And they said, fine, go ahead. And so the next month, the trust had been formed with a group of community members, school people, and they determined that they had a mission to preserve the collection, uh, to raise the funds to do that, but also to bring to the students the development of creativity in all of its forms. And that became the mission of the trust and has been ever since. They raised enough money to conserve the collection. And conservation has been a big thing because this collection of over 200 works of original art in the special collection hangs in the halls of the high school where the students live with it every day. And that's the special part. And it, we call it the unique vision of art. And it is because it's unique first because it's student chosen. Every year, the entire student body votes from uh, a, a show of possible things that also have been chosen by members of the student council. So that's the first thing. The second is that the money for purchase, for the most part, is raised by the students. And the third, which makes it unique, is that these paintings hang in the halls and the students live with them every day. Uh, we say that at the schools, the art collection does begin with a capital A. It's art for everyone and art for every day. The, uh, when Ned died in 1999, there was a, a lot of contributions in his name. And so that we started, uh, and, and after his death, then I became the chair of the, of the art trust. And they, we started the elementary art collections and then the junior high later. Uh, so that now every school has its own art collection. The children, the money is raised there. And as you will see, uh, they, the elementary and junior high students choose 
works to borrow from the Arts Center and bring it back and they vote. The, so that from kindergarten on, they own a collection of art wow. and that lasts the rest of their lives. That's incredible, incredible. And what's truly fascinating and wild to me is the fact that, you know, this massive collection that's being preserved and, and these works are, you know, completed by professional and, and even uh, sometimes famous artists um, in the area. And it's just amazing to me that they're housed in a school um, among students who, who not only live with these pieces every day, like you, like you said, but also are um, playing an active role in selecting these pieces and you know, communicating about these pieces. Um, have you, well, I'm just curious, um, how, what kind of feedback have you received from the students? over the years um, by, you know, by doing this? They, while they're in school, this is just another part of their lives. It's like the kitchen of their homes. They don't realize until they're out just what miracles happen there. But uh, we do many art tours for reunion groups who, uh, for their reunion weekend, they schedule an art tour because they want to see not only the pieces that were there when they were in high school, but they want to see what's added. When you're in school and forever, you're an owner of the collection. After all, you chose it. It's, it's interesting when we do the art tours, uh, sometimes they look at the works that were chosen when they were in school and they think, oh my heavens, why did we ever pick that? And they have to realize the art collection is chosen by students at a certain period in their lives. So that when you look at the uh, art catalog, for instance, that's in chronological order, you begin to see what the students at that time lived with or felt was important and it becomes historical. Absolutely, absolutely. And you touched on something that I was um, also thinking about is, you know, these these works live in the schools, in, in the Latrobe School District. So how, um, and, and you mentioned already briefly a little bit about the art, you know, uh, hosting art tours and whatnot. And I'm wondering how can the rest of the community really engage with these works of art um, or have access to to them, um, being that you know they can't just walk into the school maybe willy nilly. Uh, after the pandemic, mm -hmm. we'll talk yes. about that because <laughs> the, the before and after are, I'm sure are, look very different, different. are the same. Yeah. We did many, many art tours for uh, groups of the community. We do national uh, groups that come in. Uh, we, we had a group that came to see the Steelers training camp and came over for an art tour. Wow. Uh, and they have heard about it. We got some national attention. Uh, we had a group of women who came from, I, I believe, who uh, were spinners. Uh, they, they do the wool mm -hmm. and then create from that. And they had come to Ligonier to meet someone, but they came for an art tour. Wow. Uh, the community itself can arrange for such tours. And then, of course, there's the Art Gala, yes. which uh, <laughs> is an interesting uh, fundraiser because we need the money for constant conservation. And we do professional conservation. Our conservator is also the conservator at the Warhol, so that it is a costly thing. But as long as you hang them in the halls where a thousand students go wandering by every day, <laughs> uh, you're going to always need them cared for. And we do the art gala for, to do that. And that brings about 500 people to the high school. And it's like a big homecoming. They, from all classes, I, and these are not the artists, they are the people of Latrobe who feel that that's their collection too, and it is. Yeah. 
you know, I, I can remember voting when I was in high school. I can remember at the old high school where paintings hung and, and, and I thought I certain ones that I liked. And that's just the way the community feels. I, we have difficulties sometimes when Pittsburgh groups come out and they say, but this isn't Mount Lebanon. And it isn't. This is Latrobe, and the Latrobe community is so strong in support because it's their collection too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's amazing to me. And for someone too who, I have a, a, a bit of background in um, art conservation, and I know that it's a, that it is incredibly expensive. So um, you know, that's wonderful that you guys have been able to over the years continue to still um, receive the funds to, to preserve these works of art. That's that's truly wonderful. That's because of the special community. Absolutely, and Latrobe certainly is special um, right. in that regard. And that brings me to um, another thing that um, you have been integral in being a part of, which is the Art Center's um, latest uh, and sort of upcoming exhibit for Women's History Month. Uh, the exhibit is titled Remembering Her, um, a, a Reflection on Latrobe's Women in the Arts. Now, the goal of this exhibit um, was to highlight and, and re uh, remember women who not only were, were talented artists you know, in, their, in their own form of art, um, but also were significantly influential um, and inspiring in the Latrobe community. And of course, you, Barbara, and as well as the Art Conservation Trust have been um, a huge help in, in helping us you know, put this together. Um, in addition to, of course, the Center for Student Creativity and the Adams Memorial Library and the Latrobe Historical Society. So um, yeah, in, in this exhibit, which is on display now through the end of March for Women's History Month, we chose to highlight this, this time around five ind individuals. Um, the first one is Mary Martha Himmler, who is a famous artist from Latrobe. Um, and also was a teacher for many, many years. And of course, she is known for being also the co-founder of the special art collection at the, at the um, Latrobe School District, which of course you are directly uh, familiar with now. Um, our, another individual we are highlighting in this exhibit is um, Sarah Carr McComb, who is the legendary librarian of Latrobe uh, and was a librarian for many, many years um, in the, li the Latrobe Public Library System. Um, following her, we have Virginia Daniels, who was a biology teacher at the Latrobe High School. She also was um, a poet and a songwriter, which many people don't know about her. And of course, though, she is very known for uh, being the director and founder of the Latrobe Day Camp. And then, of course, following her, we have Nancy Rogers Crozier and Elizabeth Hazlett, who were both founders of the Latrobe Art Center, um, where we are today, and whose legacies really continue to live on with the day-to-day -day, uh, functioning and operations of the Art Center. So Barbara, um, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about the, your experiences with these people, because not only do you know about them, but you personally knew them. Is, isn't that correct? I knew them all. Uh, some were I knew when I was a child, mm -hmm. which was a while ago, but they were already involved with the community and what they were doing. And every single one of them was a personality, was unique, was a, a, an interest in their own right. Uh, Mary Martha Himmler, uh, I knew her from the time I started school because she already was teaching and she had determined she was it, it was interesting. Her father told her that she would never succeed in life because she was so shy. And she surely proved him wrong. Yeah, I'll uh, say. Uh, she lived on uh, North Side on Ligonier, the corner of Ligonier and First Avenue. And uh, I interviewed her once for a bulletin story and, and went to her home which was filled with paintings. Uh, painting was much a part of her life, and she was determined that everyone else would appreciate it too. <laughs> and 
I can remember from the time I was in grade school, marching out to the old high school where she would have the show the, of the paintings that were borrowed and the students would be voting. Uh, sometime when we had more time, I'll describe those. <laughs> they, but for a lot of us, that was the only art appreciation course we ever had. You know, my home had the uh, church calendar in it with pictures of the saints, and that was about it. And uh, she opened up a world to us, and not only to us, but to all of the students and the community and people that she sh thought should be artists. And, and you know the history of the art club, and she had people painting that didn't know that that's what they wanted to do. A remarkable woman. She uh, retired from the school district and she could not retire. She went to Penn State, became certified in uh, milk testing for farmers huh. and went around and did that. And then went to, I believe, Hearst High School and taught art again later. Uh, just very remarkable woman, as was uh, Sarah McComb. Uh, she was, she ruled the community in, <laughs> in the library. She would, she made, she, she was in the old library, which was partly in a basement, uh, but she made that new library possible. Uh, Fred Rogers, I saw the letter Fred Rogers wrote to her saying he was coming to the opening of the new library. He described her once as Aunt Sarah. That yes. I could not see that, but, but <laughs> he had a different relationship. But the idea that that library was so important to all of us. I was there almost every day in the summer. Uh, she, uh, she would check my hands to make sure they were clean before she let me touch her books, but uh, <laughs> it would have never happened without her. Virginia Daniels taught science. Slugger Daniels, everybody knew her. Uh, she was a gentle person, very creative, and in her classes, everybody loved her, but she had the ability to inspire her students including the girls. They might have been required to take biology, but they became important to them there. Remarkable woman. And in, when she died, she left money to the Art Trust for, to make certain the collection would be cared for. It's in our endowment. Uh, Libby Hazlett was another artist. She was a very quiet woman, but a very talented, and with a great sense of humor when you got to know her. And I, I saw that you're moving the pictures, the paintings of both Libby and Laney from the front door where uh, they just greet everybody as the founders for this wonderful, yes. wonderful place. Uh, she, as I told you before, said she had no choice but to be an artist. She was taught in school by Miss Himmler uh, uh, Libby's aunt, Minerva Ogden, was an artist, and she was a neighbor of James Beatty, the other founder of the La Trobe Art Collection. So uh, we were very, very proud that the students selected one of her works to be in the permanent special collection. Absolutely. And when they chose it, she donated it to the collection saying she could have never charged the school district because Miss Himmler would have leaned down and demanded that it be done. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, Miss Himmler probably has that much influence. And sure. Laney, she's always Laney. Uh, she just is a special person. Both she and Libby did so much community work and with the hospital and the little shop and, but both of them were, I always think of the word lady in the sense of uh, the qualities that they possessed. And Laney was always a friend. 
I remember one of the uh, fundraisers at the country club for the Arts Center, and they had an auction, and I was bidding on one of Lady Laney's paintings, and I kept bidding and kept being outbid, <laughs> and finally had to stop, uh, and I, I regretted not having that. And uh, several weeks later, she stopped by at home, and brought me a painting, oh. and it hangs in my house to this oh, day. They truly were um, and are worthy of remembering, and that's exactly why we're here today, putting on this exhibit at the Art Center, to do just that, to bring these women back to the forefront of our minds, um, to remind us here at the Art Center and remind other artists in the community um, how we came to be and, and why we're here doing what we do. So thank you so much for for talking with me about these women and for sharing your personal stories and anecdotes about them as well, which is which is truly remarkable. And especially too, um, it is remarkable hearing about these women um, from such a remarkable woman who's still with us here today and so heavily involved and invested in our art community. So thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you everyone again for joining us for our second episode of the Latrobe Art Center's new vlog, Art Neighbors. Um, stay tuned to our third episode next month, um, that, where you'll be catching a glimpse and a preview of some other um, interesting exhibits and art activities going on in the Latrobe community. And if you haven't yet seen our first episode, our premiere episode that, that took place last month, where we had guest Todd Kaiser from Seton Hills Harlan Gallery, you can check that out um, and access that video from our website, latrobeartcenter.org slash artneighbors or you can access that video by subscribing and tuning in on our YouTube channel. Until next time.